winter. The pungent smells of a California winter, grayness and rosiness, an almost transparent full moon. I add logs to the fire, I drink and I ponder. In Uava, the news item said, at age 70, died Alexander Rimkevich, poet. He was the youngest in our group. I patronized him slightly, just as I patronized others for their inferior minds, though they had many virtues I couldn't touch. And so I am here, approaching the end of the century and of my life, proud of my strength, yet embarrassed by the clearness of the view. Avant-garde's mixed with blood, the ashes of inconceivable arts, an omnium gatherum of chaos. I passed judgment on that, though marked myself. This hasn't been the age for the righteous and the decent. I know what it means to beget monsters and to recognize in them myself. You, moon, you, Alexander, fire of cedar logs. Waters close over us, a name lasts but an instant. Not important whether the generations hold us in memory. Great was that chase with the hounds for the unattainable meaning of the world. And now I am ready to keep running. When the sun rises beyond the borderlands of death, I already see mountain ridges in the heavenly forest where, beyond every essence, a new essence waits. You, music of my late years, I am called by a sound and a color which are more and more perfect. Do not die out, fire. Enter my dreams, love. Be young forever, seasons of the earth. Now, one thing we have from uh, Chesov Miwash is many poems written into old age. He continued writing until his death at age 94, and I think uh, next month probably uh, the last poems is being published, uh, this time in a translation by his son instead of by his usual translator, Robert Hass, who uh, translated this poem with him. For me, the, you know, long before, I only analyze poems I love. There's no point in looking at a poem you don't love closely. And I'm sorry that you all have only this cluttered, marked up copy of it, rather than also a clean copy, but we were being kind to the trees. Um, and what I've written on it is a kind of tracking of the transitions in the poem. Uh, it, it's, it's like how, you know, when you're looking at a rhymed and metered poem, they teach you to scan and to mark the rhyme scheme. This is doing the same thing with transitions. And one of the things I have always told my MFA students is three times in your life, take a poem you love and write down everything about it. Everything. You know, the, the sounds, the transitions, uh, look at all of the nouns and verbs separately. Every single thing you can think of to write down. Do that three times in your life and you'll change your relationship to poetry forever. You don't have to do it again after that. Um, so how does this start? It starts with looking outward and a statement, a sensory statement, reporting on something. The pungent smells of a California winter. By the time you've read that much, you're in a place, you're in a season, and you are inside your own body, smelling what he smells. The next line is a linking and an extension. He's just filling it out. He's making it more. It appears to be general, and yet it's quite specific. Grayness and rosiness, these wonderful, uh, you know, not, not gray and pink, but grayness and rosiness, an almost transparent full moon. So now you're in a place. You're feeling it. You're inside. 
and then he reveals the self, then it, the, the pronoun I. I add logs to the fire, I drink, and I ponder. You've got a human being, you've got a situation. And that rhetorical mind of expectation, what's going to happen, you're already asking yourself, oh, what is he going to ponder? He's telling us he's pondering. I wonder what it's going to be. And then instead of going straight into his thoughts, he does a little gap, a little leap, and he simply presents the thing he is seeing, this newspaper item from the Polish paper which he would get delivered to him in Berkeley. Uh, and he just tells you, you know, in Oava, the news item said at age 70 died Alexander Rimkevich, poet. So now that rhetorical mind of ours is sitting there thinking, what about him? Why are we pondering him? And he proceeds just to tell us. It's very prosy. Um, you know, he's just giving us his own thoughts. He's enacting it in front of us. He was the youngest in our group. I patronized him slightly, just as I patronized other for their inferior minds so they had many virtues I couldn't touch. There was a time when nobody would have included this in poetry. One of the expansions of poetry over the millennia has been making larger and larger the capacity to include the non-poetic in poems. Free verse is part of this. Intellect is part of this. I remember how I discovered it was OK to think in poems. It was reading Adrienne Rich, who thought in her poems. And I went, wow, you can do that? Um, Cheswiff was doing it, you know, as well. And, and uh, then he's got one of those transitions by fiat. And so he's just bringing us back. I am here. He's taking us out of his thoughts, and he's reporting in a slightly different way. And he's giving us some facts, approaching the end of the century and of my life, proud of my strength, yet embarrassed by the clearness of the view. Most writing workshop teachers would put a big red line through all of this. One of the things in the description of this talk, you know, there, I'm talking a lot about transitions, but it also said gaps, and it also said arches or arcs. One of the points of this is to show how a good arc can let you include things which would not otherwise be includable. Things which would be terrible mistakes if the poem didn't work become triumphs if they do in the end. So he's just arcing even more in this next stanza. Avant-garde's mixed with blood, the ashes of inconceivable arts, an omnium gatherum of chaos. I mean, that mix of the Latin and blood and ashes and chaos. I mean, he is evoking the entire disaster of the destruction of Warsaw, of the Second World War. Um, if one knows his work, you know that he became famous first for his poems about that time. If you followed him as a man, you know he wouldn't play on it. He wouldn't read those poems. Uh, his most famous work when he gave readings, he didn't want to be known for standing on the bodies of his dead friends. And it, he's a poet of impeccable ethics. Then from that choppy, rough, associative, fragmented language, he goes back to thinking again. So this is a kind of variation with extension. He's telling us more. It's back into the first person. I pass judgment on that, though marked myself. This hasn't been the age for the righteous and the decent. I know what it means to beget monsters and to recognize in them myself. Now, this is one of the great transitions of the 20th century. You, moon. Ah, everything is different. By going into technically the vocative voice, or if we want to describe it more warmly, into Martin Buber's I-thou relationship with everything around him. I don't think Cheswiff thought about this. I don't think he planned it. I think the poet in him did it. This is what happens when poems are alive inside of you. You, moon, you, Alexander, fire of cedar logs, waters close over us, a name lasts but an instant. 
Not important whether the generations hold us in memory, great was that chase with the hounds for the unattainable meaning of the world. There is your definition of the life of any poet. It's not about succeeding. It's about looking. It's about hunting. Then he does another transition by fiat. He pulls us back to himself. And now, I am ready to keep running. When the sun rises beyond the borderlands of death, I already see mountain ridges in the heavenly forest, where beyond every essence, a new essence waits. Then he goes back to the vocative, you music of my late years. I am called by a sound and a color which are more and more perfect. And then, again, a change of grammar into the imperative. Do not die out, fire. Enter my dreams, love. Be young forever, seasons of the earth. And there is so much more to say about this poem, about its actual subject matters, which I feel terrible skipping over. I mean, because of course the real depth of it is what it is saying. It is telling us something about age. It is telling us something about rescue. It is telling us something about being willing to leave the world behind, but not being willing to surrender the love of it. Uh, this was a great struggle for Miłosz all his life as a believing Catholic, whether he was supposed to love this world or not.